Hello everyone and good morning. Welcome to the Morning Metaphysical Report. Today is January 12th, 2020. My name is Lysander Xanthus and I'll be sharing with you the day's astrology, numerology, and some other useful information for your day ahead. voice in the background is the kitchen witch aka my fiance <laughs> all right I like to start each day with a little energy clearing and a blessing going to be using this selenite crystal to send you healing and peaceful energy. I bless you and I bless your day ahead. I bless you with peace, healing, and clarity. I bless your situation, that your path be clear, and that everyone is helpful today, that it is full of good experiences and good company. Be blessed. Let's talk about the astrology for today. Well, to be honest, uh, more of the same, mostly. <laughs> uh, the planets themselves don't move uh, very quickly, though the aspects do change daily. Um, so let's have a look here. So we have the Sun, Mercury, Jupiter, Saturn, and Pluto in Capricorn. And uh, Saturn, Pluto, and Mercury are in conjunction, which means they're all kind of at the same degree uh, today. Uh, so all these planets here are encouraging us to become the leaders of our own lives, really take charge. It's up to us to change things. Uh, the conjunction of Saturn, Pluto, and Mercury in Capricorn is like a big, uh, has a sense of a, a wake up call and is potentially a catalyst for awareness and self expression, especially within terms of Capricorn traits of, um, realizing what it is that needs to happen, especially consciously with Mercury there, to move yourself forward. Um, I feel as though things have really been building up to this point of clarity, so hopefully um, that influence is exerting itself on your behalf today and you get that sense of being shook up from whatever illusion or ideas you have had that you've been living under and really being ready to step forth in a real way and with Jupiter and the Sun in the same house uh, this is uh, meant to be a very good thing and a good opportunity. Mars is in Sagittarius so our sense of initiative is also uh, and our passions are pushing us to exploring possibilities what is the potential for us is out there. Uh, Venus is in Aquarius, so 
we are more inclined to the independent and more inclined towards community rather than one-on-one -on -one relationships in our love life. And we may be seeking new and different ways of being with other people. Um, Neptune is in Pisces, so we're very connected at this time with our deeper feelings and our intuitions. Uranus is in Taurus, so uh, Taurus represents, uh, can point to material considerations and our comfort zones, our habits, what's our ideas of security are, and Uranus is the revolutionary, so it's uh, time to shake things up a bit. Uh, the moon is in Leo, and it's just barely beginning its waning cycle. So we are just, just a teeny bit starting to turn our attention inward. And we are feeling a very strong need to, for a praise, acknowledgement, to do something well, to feel important. Um, and there can be a sense of grandness in our inner selves or feelings, like things feeling like they're on a big scale. Um, Leo is associated to drama, but I don't like, I feel like that doesn't really communicate the gist of the meaning. So Leo is big in every way, uh, not just being dramatic, but being generous and really having very strong needs and pulls. Doing everything in a big way. Yeah. <laughs> Do it up Vegas style. Make it right. <laughs> but more importantly, uh, with the moon here, the moon points kind of how we're feeling on the inside and maybe what our needs are. So a need to feel important, acknowledged, to do something well. Or to be told that we're doing something well. <laughs> uh, so it would be a mistake for your loved ones to dismiss you at this time. All right. So. Uh, we have some comments here. Alrighty. Nothing that needs a direct response, I think. Alright, so the aspects today. Okay, that is it. Just the Saturn, Pluto, and Mercury conjunction that I already mentioned. So look at my notes. Uh, so yeah, that is a a big deal but it's a good thing so excited about the energy of that conjunction uh, really kind of like a big eye-opener and I'm a fan of Capricorn energy because it's like um, really opening the potential to open to your eyes to really what it will take to move start moving yourself towards the life that you want and further along your your personal path so, yeah. also welcome everyone. This concludes the astrology. So now let us talk about the numerology for today. It is a free day. Today is an interesting. Yeah, uh, we're gonna talk day. about it. It's, so it's pretty great though. Uh, I, I do the numerology each day to type it out. And everything. I like this one. It's a good one. So first, just three in a general sense, it values the three vibration values, communication and creative energy. It is expressive. It wants to express itself. So the 12th of the month, the 12th is a three day, a particularly lucky day. Good energy altogether. You should get out and about and generally have a good time. There's plenty to be done, but you should have more than enough energy to cope with anything today and still find time for fun. If you're at work today, definitely make plans with a best friend for lunch. Be playful with your partner. Tonight is all about sensuality and passion. There's just big energy. It's big. So I think with the numerology and astrology, it's up to us how we want to utilize it. And we're all different people, so it's going to express itself in different ways. I think the placement of the moon and it being you know, the 12th of the month, which is such an auspiciously lucky day. I really do it up big, you know? 
-hmm. Everything's in your favor today. Do it up big. Make it grandiose. <laughs> Don't just get your nails done. Get a spa treatment, you know? <laughs> Do it up big. Indeed. All right, now it is time for uh, the crystal healing of the day. Fantastic. Who do we have today? Uh, well, I kind of rushed, so this is the first crystal I saw. Oh, gosh. <laughs> She's not happy with this. I'm not happy with this. Do it up, babe. I mean, this one's good, too. We... So I have blue calcite here, but she's going to pick another one. So maybe we'll use both. Do it up big. Or we could use the amethyst geode. Literally the biggest crystal we have. Uh, all right. Let me draw up the <laughs> meaning of amethyst. I mean, I know what it is, but sometimes I don't organize my thoughts very well. I just feel like... You know, today's one of those days that if you're going to heal someone, you need to heal someone like There it is. I mean, this this is a good choice, too. They're, I feel like they're both good choices in different ways. Okay. They actually have kind of similar traits. How about that? I was going to say, they should be pretty much in the same way. <laughs> All right, so let's house. move the mic, because sometimes I knock it while doing the crystal healing. All right. Everybody, I'm gonna buckle in for this crystal deal. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's quite that serious. <laughs> so we have blue calcite. Uh, I will tell you about this, and uh, I will tell you about amethyst. Fantastic. So blue calcite soothes frayed nerves and lessens anxieties. A gentle stone to use when recuperating it clears negative emotions, and encourages rest and relaxation. It can enhance or activate intuition and inner sight. Very good. Now. <laughs> it's gorgeous. This is, this is how to do the crystal healing. I'm going to put it on the desk, and when I use this, I'm not going to lift it around <laughs> and move it through your energy. I'm going to point the camera down at it. Um, so amethyst is also a natural tranquilizer, relieves stress and strain, soothes irritability, balances mood swings, dispels anger, rage, fear, anxiety, alleviates sadness and grief, and dissolves negativity. It also activates spiritual awareness, opens intuition, and enhances psychic ability. So strangely alike. Um, so, uh, this, I'll tell you a little quick personal story time about this crystal. Uh, let's let's look down at the amethyst. Beautiful crystal. I've had this amethyst since I was like eight years old. Uh, it was a gift from one of, from a family member. And uh, I've had it a really, really long time. <laughs> and it's heavy. And it's heavy. It's yes, it is heavy. big and it is heavy. So I've been toting this around with me through my travails for a long time and I've not let it go. But I think it was well worth the effort. Could you imagine like being a child with this thing? I I was kind of a bookworm. I like learning stuff. So these are the kind of things that I know. Well, this is the only thing like this that I got. The other, sure, I got other crystals, but they were like little tumbled rocks of agate and such. Oh, we could see it pretty well without just, the light. I, I just thought we would love to see it. Yeah. Just wanted to give everybody yes, a Yes, it see. is an impressive piece and ridiculous, and as an adult, I uh, now know enough to appreciate what this is. <laughs> um, All right, so we're just going to use both of the crystals together and rest the blue calcite on top of that, like so. So now you're going to experience the energy of both of these crystals together for yourself. Um, if you would like to participate in this crystal healing, make yourself comfortable, breathe, and allow yourself to connect with the energy of this crystal. This amethyst and I are ultra bonded. 
because <laughs> I've had it for so long. So we're going to do some good work with you guys today. My goodness, there's a big crack on the back side. I'm not surprised, honestly. It's, I've had it so long and it's like crossed all over the country. So eventually this side here will break off. Um, all right. Let's do this. Let's do this beautiful crystal healing that you have prepared for us. So I'm going to begin, and I'm going to channel the energy of these two crystals to you and through your energy. Going to gently touch your third eye and direct the energy there for any for mental clarity as well as any intuitive opening that uh, you are ready for at this time. crystals as well. This is India Temple Incense, and it blesses, clears, and lends you wisdom. This concludes the crystal healing with amethyst and the calcite. And Carla is referring to the blue heart uh, right here, the reflection off of one of the geode points. All right. Do this and yeah, see. See you at the back. I'm wondering if it's from when we traveled up here. Probably is a really rough trip, so eventually this side here is gonna pop off. Yeah, I hadn't noticed. I'll just be careful with it for a while. Yeah. So that's pretty. 
ones up here. <laughs> All right, let us take a moment to sit in the energy that we received. We are going to be moving into our affirmation for the day. Uh, let's see. Uh, I can look it up myself later, but what is a blue rod orb? <laughs> oh, someone mentions blue rod orbs. So I was asking what that is. All right. We're going to move into the affirmation. Fantastic. Now that we're in this good healing space. Affirmations are the greatest. This affirmation comes to you from the book Heal Your Body by Louise Hay. And this uh, affirmation addresses fatigue, but it is good even if you're not suffering from that in particular. You know, in the middle of the night when I decided to, <laughs> when I finally got home and started setting everything up, I was like, somehow, I feel like a fatigue affirmation is going to be beneficial. <laughs> Thank you for the feedback, everyone. It's always interesting to hear what about people's experiences. Uh, so I'm going to read this affirmation to you first, so you can focus on hearing the words and taking them in, rather than focusing on saying them. I'm going to say it in first person and second person, and then at the end we will say it together as well. I am enthusiastic about life and filled with energy and enthusiasm. I am enthusiastic about life and filled with energy and enthusiasm. You are enthusiastic about life and, f and are filled with energy and enthusiasm. You are enthusiastic about life and are filled with energy and enthusiasm. Now we'll say it together three times. I am enthusiastic about life and filled with energy and enthusiasm. I am enthusiastic about life and filled with energy and enthusiasm. I am enthusiastic about life and filled with energy and enthusiasm. So sit with those words. It's a big energy day. You know, that was such a good choice for it being such a big do it up kind of day. A smile. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's a good, good affirmation to smile to, you know, with enthusiasm stretches your face that direction, speed into it. Yeah, and it. this may sound silly, but enthusiasm is one of my favorite words uh, <laughs> at a point in high school. And so I know a little bit about the etymology. Uh, the root word of enthusiasm is entheos, which comes from ancient Greek, which kind of means like in God. So enthusiasm was to to say someone's enthusiastic is to say that they're filled with divine spirit because they're wow. so bright and full of life. Um, so yeah, just a random tidbit. That that's, concludes the affirmation. That's a really cool, that's a really cool random tidbit. Yeah. Uh, yes, I, <laughs> I really like the word enthusiasm. I mean, it, it, it is. It is a good word. It's a word that makes you feel good word you can do it up in. In English class, you, well at least in the schools I went to, you had to learn the root words of things, so uh, I started looking words up for myself, so I thought that was really interesting. Uh, anywho, it is time for the magic tip of the day. Magic tip of the day. So let's see what I have written down here. Alright, 
Uh, today is Sunday. Apparently I decided to do a tip about Sunday. Uh, so Sunday is a traditional holy day of reflection and worship, whether regardless of your spiritual faith, it's kind of deeply ingrained in culture and for at least several centuries uh, uh, and longer, it has been a day set aside to uh, uh, reflect. Consider setting a morning aside once a week to turn yourself towards spiritual nourishment. It doesn't have to be Sunday, it's just uh, uh, it made me think of it. Um, sure, there's the argument that you should live your spirituality every day, but even if you do do that, it's still good to set aside a specific morning where you get up and kind of take time to reflect and to intentionally connect with your divine sources and higher powers, whoever you see those as being, and really uh, feed yourself that spiritual nourishment and soul food. Um, and for some people, you don't, they don't have the privilege or luxury of incorporating spirituality into their day-to-day -day life. So setting aside a morning once a week uh, can be extremely nourishing, nurturing, and beneficial. Um, you may wonder how that's a, well, it's more of a spiritual tip, but uh, when the more connected you are to yourself and to your divine source, um, it does fuel your magic and adds kind of more groundedness and solidity to whatever magic you enact. So uh, that's the magic tip of the day to set aside time that is devoted to making that connection and feeding your spirit and doing that at the same time each week or however often you want to do it. All right, so that's the tip for today. So now I'm gonna, going to be doing a card reading. Uh, we're at the card reading for today. I will be doing a reading for all of you, giving you insight and guidance into your day ahead. Uh, all of the reading may resonate for you or just parts of it may, and either is fine. Excellent. What deck are we using today? I don't know. <laughs> uh, mm. I don't usually pick until this moment every morning. That's true. I don't know. I'm enthusiastic about the reading I'm going to work that word into my vocabulary all day. I think everybody watching is ready to get a little guidance. I think you're gonna have to use the, the psychic tarot because it's just such a bright, sunny, happy, enthusiastic day. We, we Nicoletta's just gonna be like too. too I was getting real, real scared because I'm feeling like reading with Aya today. Oh no! <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, no. don't ruin the vibe. We got good vibes. Good, 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 good vibes. All right. So today's reading comes to you from the Psychic Tarot Oracle deck. What are you reading over there? Oh, I've got the universe has your back over here. I thought I could interject a little sunny something. Good. Uh, so let's see what the cards have to say to us today. Double reading. It's like double rainbow. All right, well, they were very eager to speak today. I shuffled twice. <laughs> yes, this might also relate to you. <laughs> so it is. Uh, the readings speak to us as much as they speak to you. So I will be reading the descriptions from the book because it's an oracle deck, the entries are kind of advisory. So you also may find specific lines how the booklet apply to you. I also offer my own interpretation. 
The oh. Kitchen Witch did a reading too for everybody. What's pretty? Um, so, uh, the Kitchen Witch also did a reading with her deck. Um, what's it? The Universe Has Your Back. So I'm going to share her cards first because they're way more simple. This is my favorite card. Obstacles are detours in the right direction. I love that card. Pay attention. Take it in. Every time you have a difficulty today, remember the universe uses obstacles to move you onto the right path. So if a bunch of stuff's going wrong, you better check yourself. Obstacles are detours in the right direction. So important. The card following that is, I let go the shadow of the past by seeing someone for the first time with the eyes of love. Very important as well. Really let that sink in. Let it go and see through the eyes of love see someone for the first time with the eyes of love. You've got to change the way you have looked at this person. But love in a, a greater sense. The kind of love that looks out for divine will, the true spiritual path of that person. It honors your own as well. Alright. Words. Yes, this is a collective reading. And that, that was my two cents for the day. And of course, my hand is going to be gracing us with a more in-depth yes. sort of reading. Uh, I do other videos sometimes for individual readings, or I do offer private services. Uh, but this is a collective reading. So uh, now I'm going to be showing the cards that came up for, for you from this deck. first card is the waiting game. This card indicates that you've worked hard to set things in motion in certain areas of your life and you're now waiting for the results to come to fruition. The number two is all about choice and decision. In the past you may have been afraid of making decisions or choices but now you're no longer held prisoner by this fear of the constraints of old <laughs> beliefs. Sorry, I had to turn the page. Expect the best and be open to the limitless power of your intuition, which is presently very strong. Trust and use it to assist you. Achievement and success are assured, but once attained, don't let it change you. Remember who you are, the effort that it took to get you to this point, and the gratitude you need to show to the people who helped you. Stay on your spiritual path for it will continue to guide you on the journey of your soul. The card following that is victory and success. Good news is on the way. The qualities of this positive card are completion, victory, and success that often follow a difficult period. Many people around you are very proud to see how you triumphantly came through it. They respect you and may even attempt to follow your example. You've worked hard and devoted much effort to get to this point in your life where you've become wiser and have grown in so many ways. Always remember to stop and pat yourself on the back. You deserve it. This card also reminds you to stay grounded, remember where you came from, and keep your ego in check. Don't lose who you really are. This victory can be used as a teaching tool for the future. Realize that if you came through this challenging time, you can achieve anything. Seeing some themes. Sandy's comment, which was uh, things that need to go hmm. 
It was good. He had to be there. Uh huh. <laughs> okay. Deception and envy. To be forewarned is to be forearmed. This card comes at a time when individuals or conditions aren't what they appear to be. How well do you really know the people around you? Are they telling you everything you need to know? In business, make sure you gather all the necessary information so that you're aware of and understand all of the facts before continuing. I feel today that this is pertaining to relationships, not business. Everybody, everybody is a little bit different, but you know, get those facts. Yeah. Get, get those. Facts. What area? Whatever area of your life. You've worked hard. Don't let others take from you what is rightly yours. For unfortunately, some people may be envious of your accomplishments. This card also represents a time of sudden and unexpected changes or when plans that you're undertaking may not turn out exactly the way you envisioned. Have a plan B as a fallback strategy to prevent future problems. Use this card as a reminder to be prepared. It's better to be safe than sorry. That's just my feeling. I feel like it's about personal relationships, not work, for the most part. All right. Sorry. It's just making faces. I'm all on about the these cards today. It's just, they're too much. Today is just one of those days where everything is just pointing. Yes, indeed. The haters, though. The haters, though. Uh, Destiny is the <laughs> last <laughs> card in the series. Good luck and fortune are now in your favor. A cycle of change, success, and growth is imminent. Life ebbs and flows in its natural journey, and the destiny card signifies that good karma has come full circle. Lady Luck is pointing directly at you. It's a lucky day, you it's guys. It's such a lucky day. What you sowed, you're about to reap. Open up your heart and accept and receive what you've earned. Opportunities, whether expected or unexpected, are knocking at your door. This is a time to allow your problems to be replaced by solutions. Believe in destiny as you learn to let go of old issues. You're being given the chance to understand the lessons. Sorry, she's dancing around the background. Okay. <laughs> You're being given the chance to understand the lessons and gain wisdom from the past, enabling you to move steadily forward in a positive direction. Holding on to a strong belief that you deserve to be happy and prosperous and have abundance in all areas of your life is the key. This confident mindset will show you that the impossible can indeed become the possible. With this card, take advantage of all opportunities. Act now, take responsibility for your actions, and enjoy the fact that destiny is presently in your favor. Don't always rely on luck, however, for the wheel most definitely will turn again. Not in an ominous way, it's just the nature of things. All right, y'all, I hope you're ready. That was <laughs> such a good reading. I am all about this 12 day. All about this, this do it up grand Leo energy followed up by this powerful lucky 12 day. The Saturn, wait, the Saturn, Pluto, Mercury conjunction in Capricorn. Most of all, you know, it's all, it's all beautiful. Here. <laughs> oh, look at them. So, you know, the conjunction and the, so the astrology, the numerology, the card reading, the crystal healing, especially the conjun conjunction, Saturn, Pluto, Mercury, I was describing it as a wake up call something being shaken loose, uh, a grand disruption. Um, so I feel this reading kind of hearkens to that a bit is that, um, I feel as though those of you watching will be fine, but <laughs> some people I know are not ready. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> um, there, there are some people in our lives with some, uh, who have some wake-ups coming. I mean, 
I'm sure you guys do too, where you there's just people in your life that's like, you've been expecting something to happen for a long time. It's a long time coming, and now is the the match being struck and it's dropped on the gunpowder. It's all gonna burn. <laughs> it's, it is a thing. You've been watching the, you know, the gunpowder being quietly shook across the little lines for the last few years. And now the struck has been the match has been struck and it's about to get dropped. <laughs> we we have a, a very or rather I have a very personal connection to the reading and the astrology and everything today. Uh, dealing with a an old friend who is just incapable of seeing the nose on his face, and his whole life has just kind of been getting. The, the threads have been getting finer and finer and it's just the universe has just been waiting to cut those threads out from under him and watch him fall and uh, it's about to happen and we've been predicting it for some time and he's just ignored us and we're well, we're just sitting back we're it's one of those days in it's other fun. words this is an excellent day for magic for big rituals. I don't like getting complicated, but today is a great day to make your magic complicated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and yeah. poof, yeah. And poof. Kaboom. 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 No, it, it is. It's it's just fantastic. Um, let's see, what do we normally do next? What's that one? Well, you took my cards away, but so I'm trying to remember what they were because uh, there's more I want to say about them because I feel like this is an important reading. It's okay, you can have them back after... I was just saying, you should have said you needed them. I wouldn't have taken them away. Ah. Hashtag karma. Thank you, Sandy. Yes. Mm -hmm. Hashtag karma. Especially in its traditional sense of like where it's literally the unfolding of your actions. <laughs> the natural end result of whatever you have done. Yeah. No, I mean it's <laughs> Hashtag karma up in here. So, yes, our cards here, they're good news for you guys because I always direct this reading for the people watching, whether they're watching live or watching the replay. And that's why sometimes my fiance is, is included because she is watching. So it's everyone watching the show. <laughs> this uh, week it's happened a couple of times where you've done readings and I'm just like, oh, um, that's, that's me too. Thank so, you. These two cards are pointing to that um, setting things up for success, being meticulous, and that success is in your hand. And uh, destiny certainly uh, not only says that success is in your hand, but that there's the element of what I refer to as divine right. Uh, the idea is that each soul has its own true will, its destiny, its path, and if everyone follow their destiny no one would run into each other so if anyone ever crosses each other or gets in the way or there's problems it means someone's not on their path so whenever divine right comes up it means that you are on your divine path and whatever it is you're about to do or planning is your divine right to do yeah and this is the deception card is sorry wrong one uh is talking about the issues at hand, the people in the way, the, the haters, the problem people in your life who are not on, <laughs> who are not on their path. And that's why they're in the way. But thankfully, it's just all coming together to say that it's gonna... Now is the time. Now is the time. One way or another, this will be resolved once and for all. And if you continue to be on your right path, you will make it out not only unscathed, but ahead. There you go. It's just such a good reading. I just have to look at it a couple of times. You know? High five. High paw. Okay. I'm seeing some energy in the cards. Blue, yellow, and indigo. Oh, yeah. I like these cards. These cards have been around for a while. Yeah, you've had this deck a long time. Longer than we've known each other. Uh, she was my teacher first. And this was the deck I learned to divine on. I've this deck for, I've had almost all of my decks for about 12 years. So. So I'm going to see 
if they'd like to add anything, I don't want to go on to... I was going to say, I don't know. I don't want them to ruin the awesome mo mojo of this reading. Why are you giving them opportunities? <laughs> <laughs> That's probably it for the reading today. Yes, I know I'm being a little sillier than usual. I hope no one minds. Yeah, it's because Uranus went direct. Oh gosh, when did that? Was that yesterday? It was on Friday. It was on Friday. That's right. Man, the tension. It's like. Well, it's been a time of reassessing changes or your habits, but now it's just in the uh, direct mode of like uh, your comfort zone is a table and it's flipping it. Right. <laughs> no, I mean, that was basically my Friday. Friday was just me like... That's Uranus and Taurus. Friday was just me setting up my little tea table, making it look pretty and being like, flip. It's your comfort zone is a table and Uranus is here to flip it, so... That punk walked in looking goth rock and flipped my tea table. That's it. The last card. That is all. Oh, there was another card, people. It's not a bad card, though, so I'm okay with the cards talking. So. <laughs> I was looking at them. So this card is Choose Wisely. This card comes forth when you have a vision or goal that you want to achieve, but too many choices, scattered energies, and unrealistic expectations prevent you from attaining what you desire. Opportunities are bountiful, but there's a decision to be made at this time. Capricorn is all about decision, decision making. So with this conjunction, today is a day for decision. Um, this card reminds you that the options now around you may appear to have all the influence and power, but in reality, you're in control and responsible for all the choices you make. I feel like that sentence bears repeating. Say it again. This card reminds you that the options now around you may appear to have all the influence and power, but in reality, you are in control and responsible for all the choices you make. Take time to think, analyze, and carefully look at the different possibilities that are in front of you. Don't be hasty just because you feel pressured, and don't be influenced by people who have no idea, expertise, or education in the area of your choice. A focused, wise decision far outweighs one that is made emotionally or in desperation. You are in control. So this is so Capricorn. Uh, we have Saturn, which is the taskmaster, Pluto, mm -hmm. the... Uh, transformative force in Mercury, the mind, together in Capricorn. And so that is all about decisions, ex being responsible for yourself, and exercising your power. Yes, it's your power. Take your power back if it's been given away. Own the power that you possess. And remember, it is your divine right to walk the path you are on. Walk that path. Do that thing. <laughs> no, it's definitely that kind of day. It's an em empowerment kind of day if you choose to take it. Otherwise, if you're not going to step forth into the fire in all of your power and see take it all back, then you might experience a more tower-like kind of day instead. Um, Don't have for a those tower day. For those of you familiar with tarot, the tower card is uh, it's a reference to the Tower of Babylon that collapsed. Um, so it kind of refers to unstable situations and everything kind of falling apart. So, um, there's a choice to be made. And when it comes to manifesting the life you desire and changes that you want, you need to make a decision first. Don't wait for things to work out to decide. Decide. And the universe responds and things start to work out. Hashtag free will. Hell yeah. My, my new favorite hashtag outside of hashtag vortex. <laughs> Love this. It's like watching the weather forecast. Thank you. That's what I'm going for. That is what we have been striving to achieve. There is no reason <laughs> why metaphysics needs to be so serious. Is, it a, is it a good day to travel? Yeah, well, it depends. It's, yeah, it depends on your motivation. 
you know? Feel, do you feel like traveling would be good for you? Do it. That's, that's what's on my mind today. The little devil from uh, Disenchanted. Oh, Lucy. Do it, do it, do it. <laughs> oh. Achieve your goal. Do it. All right, that concludes the reading. I want to be sure that we remember the point. Keep that in mind. Um, <laughs> this video will be available for replay for anyone who needs to go over it again. Yes. Yes, it will. Which is always nice. Sometimes you just gotta revisit those, those happy motivations. Love is your motivation. Do it. Travel today. Love is the best motivator of all. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, yes. Sandy's like, oh, I can't believe I didn't know that about the tower. The, uh, the tarot has a rich lore of uh, centuries of human culture boi boiled down into it, and of course it, the meaning has been layered upon in, ad in uh, infinity. So yes, uh, it is a big tower stretching up to heaven, being struck by lightning, and all the people are falling out of the tower. And the card is a reference to Babylon, because the tower was an example of human hubris and ego and falsehoods, uh, challenging what was true and natural, because they were trying to build a tower to heaven, to reach God, uh, to say that they could do something, could do something yeah. like that. However you want to look at that story, that's the gist of it. And so God smash the tower and he made everyone speak different languages um hence where the term babel comes from from babylon um people started babbling in different tongues so they were no longer able to work together to create anything like that ever again um so when humans unite you can challenge and scare the gods into striking back <laughs> that's what humans that, unite. that's the real that's the the secret that's the secret lesson message. see <laughs> The unintended message in that story <laughs> um, but it's the tower is about falsehood falling away so when your life falls apart it's because that stuff wasn't supposed to be there right and in tarot the tower card is followed by the star the star represents your true self your soul self and when the tower breaks down the idea is that the star is what remains so there you go a quick tarot tip yeah <laughs> I'm passionate about the subject, so yeah. yeah. No, I mean it's it's major arcana is beautiful, super awesome information. Um, but yes, don't have a tower day. Have an awesome go get it, do it, do it, do it kind of day. Yeah, I wish you could post gifts on here. It, well, in the future, if we save the gift we could add it to our program and then make it a slide oh, so, <laughs> or I insert totally, it. I yeah. totally need like a... Oh no. Now yeah, we're going to start adding it. memes and gifts to the morning yes. report. This is a new life I mean, we need, we need, we need modern, modern magic. Too. You think that gods don't use memes? They do. <laughs> right? Who needs a crumbly tower? What? Not today. Yeah. Today is a go get it kind of day. Nah, this this morning report needs more levity. I think memes would be. I want to make my own memes. Yeah. <laughs> the Imhotep ones are pretty good. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's gonna be like my go to for for awesome memes for this for this show from now on. Yeah. This someone Imhotep. on the internet made the comment that the actor who played Imhotep in The Mummy Returns, or The Mummy, The Mummy, uh, The Mummy, uh, he has such great facial expressions that is like prime meme content, so people started making memes of him. Yeah. <laughs> I made like six at one point. It was, it was All good. about Thanksgiving. Yeah, there was the one about Thanksgiving. Great. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, that is, look that up. If you have not seen those, look those up. Okay, so <coughs> we uh, normally go into our reading right now. Yes, I was about to talk about that. Yes, I was going to say we should do some of our announcements and all that before we go into our book because our book reading is intensive today. Is Well, it is not what everyone is here for. So let's go ahead and get our updates out of the way. All right. All right. So we're going to do announcements and then we're going to do the book reading for today. Fantastic. Um, 
So if you enjoyed watching the Morning Metaphysical Report today, please like, follow, or subscribe to my page or channel, depending on where you are watching this. Um, so you can keep seeing it. Um, if you follow me on Facebook, YouTube, or Instagram, you will, or Patreon, you will see my other content, so I guess anywhere, mostly. Yeah. Uh, the, the freshest stuff is on Facebook, because that's where it airs first. It's fresh. Yeah. <laughs> Does it, doesn't have chests sit around before. So... <laughs> content like this, free content like this, is possible due to support from viewers like yourself. Thank you. Thank you. So if you would like to support the continuation of the Morning Report and the creation of more and its growth and expansion and similar content, please visit patreon.com slash freedomdreamcoaching. That link is in the description of the video. Uh, there you will learn about us, the goals we're working towards, and you will see a ton of content. Some of it is private for our members only. And the way that you can support us is through a monthly subscription through Patreon. Our lowest membership level is $1 a month, and every bit helps. And if you become a patron, you get really cool rewards and a chance to see our ghost hunting videos. Yes which we are planning a trip to the local cemetery yes. for more ghost hunting so videos. It's we, gonna be awesome. It's true, we actually do do paranormal investigations and we film them, but those are for patrons only, so you have to join to watch them. I also do like ghost removals from homes and stuff, so we're gonna start like yeah. doing some of that too. It's freaking cool. We both do it. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, what else? I mean, there's other exclusive things. That's just kind of like one example. That's just one example. Um, are you going to be doing any reading videos today? I'm not sure what I'm doing today. I will be live again today. Later I will in the afternoon. Because I need the camera. At noon. Yes. Um, I will either be doing readings. Or I will be discussing a topic. Topic discussion. Is fun. Probably energy blocks. Ooh. Um, today my fiance. Eliza Nanos, the Kitchen Witch, is doing a live stream on the Facebook page Freedom Dream Coaching. The event is on my page as well. Of uh, know thyself about her spiritual life coaching, uh, the importance of knowing yourself spiritually. Mm -hmm. uh, she mm -hmm. was originally my spiritual and magical teacher, um, and so what she's going to be talking about is the first. Uh, material that she taught me and it as you c hopefully as you can see it provided a strong foundation for my development over the years so that's gonna um, be today, at noon. today at noon in our time zone so you should definitely visit the event page to find out what time that is in your time zone so uh, you can get to that event page through Lysander's um, Facebook page click on events or you can go to freedom dream coaching and uh, that's where the event will be taking place is on that page. And again, that is 12 o'clock or noon today, Mountain Standard Time. So you'll have to check it out for yourself, depending on where in the world you are. Um, looking forward to it, though. Today is such a high energy kind of day. I think it's going to be a great talk. So I think so. Highly encouraged. Highly encouraged. Alrighty. Um, I else? just wanted to get that that out of the way before you went into the book. The book is a little bit serious. The so book is serious. I want, I'm going to explain the book. I want everyone to uh, be aware so. of the serious content coming forward. Um, yeah, fantastic. I think that's our advice. Yeah, so I truly hope that you will choose to follow my content. That is, if you feel that it has benefited you, I also hope that you will choose to join patreon of course there's no obligation but we'd love to have you uh you will More people as a you. side note uh you do get added to a private facebook community with all the other patrons so all that's cool free stuff and learning and awesomeness. yeah i share like special discount codes not for my products for like things like the law of attraction planner and other things uh so you get all kinds of uh side perks that aren't even mentioned on patreon through that group um 
Oh, there's one more thing I wanted to mention. Oh, um, yeah. If you go to my Facebook page or YouTube or, or whatever, uh, or Patreon, uh, check out the content because I'm always talking about different kinds of things. Like uh, yesterday I did a talk about divine gifts, gifts given to us by the gods, um, and how to make your this year your best year yet. All right, enough of that. So now we're going to be moving into the book reading. Yes. All right. So we've started a new book for all of you that have been tuned in with us for the last uh, couple months. Yes. So I did talk about this yesterday, but I will, I'm going to have to preface it a wee bit each time. Um, so on my Facebook page, there is a quiz called the All Is Well Self-Assessment Quiz. Uh, it's not necessary for you to take it to derive value from this material, but it would help you. Um, essentially, the quiz is going to help highlight your areas of that uh, you need to focus on for your healing. And each chapter in this book is dedicated to those different areas. Um, however, I do believe also that these chapters just provide good food for thought, uh, broadening of perspective, and I think that we are also self-aware enough to know if uh, the section I'm reading sounds like an area that we need help with. So uh, I encourage you to take that quiz, uh, but it is not uh, required, strictly speaking. So as you can see, the book is All Is Well, and it is focused on emotional, spiritual, and physical healing through uh, alternative methods. It's a pretty fantastic book. Um, I think I'm actually going to go ahead and go into the sections. So, uh, I believe that most of us here are familiar with the idea of the mind-body connection, which is just what the introductory chapter describes. And we all know that Allopathic medicine is important too. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, uh, Pamela took the quiz. I think I think taking it is really yeah. well. Uh, since you weren't here, uh, yesterday's report was really long, and we actually did the quiz live. Oh, really? uh, and I also typed it out. So um, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, I wasn't. Here. <laughs> I should I should take the quiz again. It's been a a bit. I was thinking of doing that just to see where we are and all that. Mm -hmm. It is it is incredible content. Incredible content, everybody. Buckling for some growth. So we're going to go in order. So I'm starting with uh, chapter four, We Are Family. Uh, this addresses the first emotional center, bones, joints, blood, immune system, and skin. So for those of you who took the quiz, uh, this would for those of you who scored highest in section one, this is you. Uh, this chapter also addresses, it describes it as the first emotional center, but it's also issues pertaining to the root chakra. All right, so I'm gonna read a few paragraphs. Um, so I'm not gonna read the whole chapter at once. You'll have to tune in each morning to continue hearing from the book. And that's just kind of the nature of the program. Uh, if you'd like to read it for yourself, you're also welcome to just uh, acquire the book. All right, so I'm going to begin. The first emotional center. The health of the first emotional center depends on your feeling safe in the world. Uh, the health of the root chakra depends on your feeling safe in the world. If you don't have the support of family and friends that you need to thrive, you will see this insecurity manifest in your blood, immune system, bones, joints, and skin. The key to enjoying health in this center is balancing your own needs with those of the meaningful social groups in your life. Family and friends, work, and an organization to which you are devoted all take up time and energy. But they are also meant to give back in the form of friendship, safety, and security. They should provide a sense of belonging. These are all reasons human beings seek out other people and groups. However, the needs of the group should never be allowed to overshadow your own needs, particularly your health. 
when you are not getting what you need from relationships or activities on which you spend considerable time, your body and mind will start to tell you. At first, the signs may be as simple as fatigue, skin rashes, or joint pain. Mild problems in the first emotional center or root chakra can serve as an early warning system, letting you know when you have gone off track. Ignoring your body's warnings could lead to a world of hurt. Chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia, osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, Epstein Barr virus, sorry, I'm laughing at her. I'm not laughing at these. <laughs> They're not funny. <laughs> Hepatitis A, B, or C, mononucleosis, Lyme disease, allergies, rashes, psoriasis, sorry, uh, joint pain and autoimmune disorders like lupus all stem from an imbalance in the first emotional center or root chakra. The part of your body in which the sickness manifests depends on what's causing the feeling of insecurity. For example, if you feel so overwhelmed by family responsibilities that you put your own needs on the back burner, the insecurity you feel will create illness in your bones. Feeling hopeless and helpless will show up in your blood. Feeling completely alone and outcast from your family will bring illness to your immune system. And being unable to set boundaries with those around you will show up in skin ailments. We'll get into more specifics as we move through each organ system. For now, just remember, it is important to listen to your body's warnings and take action. By focusing on why you are not feeling safe and secure, you can change thought and behavior patterns that may be adding to your sickness. First emotional center and root chakra affirmations and science. So what's the importance of affirmations? If you fundamentally don't believe that you are capable or worthy of receiving support, foundation, and security, medicine alone won't be able to cure what ails you. You must address the underlying beliefs that led you down the road of health problems in the first place. If you are experiencing illness in your blood, immune system, bones, joints, or skin, you are probably also having negative thoughts such as, I can't independently support myself. I have nobody to help support me. I feel depressed, joyless, hopeless, and helpless. I am unloved and alone. This is where affirmations come in. They help you change these core beliefs. If you use affirmations to address the negative thought patterns and beliefs, the doubts and fears, and apply available medical science, you will start to see huge changes in your health and in your emotional life. If you look at the affirmations that address illness and organs of the first emotional center, or root chakra, you will see that they have to do with building support, foundation, security, structure, family, movement, and flexibility. The health of your bones in general reflects the structure of your life and how you draw on and use the support others offer you. If you feel loved and supported, your spine will feel structurally strong and flexible. Conversely, if you feel a lack of support and security in your life, you may suffer from osteoporosis and bone fractures. A lack of security doesn't necessarily come only from relationships around you. It can also come from a weak relationship with yourself. Louise's affirmations note that an inability to support yourself independently in the world is associated with a weakened immune system and susceptibility to viruses, which can result in illnesses such as Epstein-Barr and mononucleosis. 
She refers to this as a draining of your inner support. If you look at the biological basis of this, you'll see that a suppressed immune system often comes from problems in your bone marrow, which is responsible for producing new blood cells and is a key component of the lymphatic system which supports the immune system. What can science tell us about the connection between mind and body health and the affirmation system? Family, a sense of belonging, is fundamentally important for health in our bodies. Social interaction plays a vital role in everyday regulation of our body systems. If you isolate yourself, you remove the metabolic regulators that are present when you interact with a group, and your rhythms, your life it seems, goes kind of kaflui, which affects the health of your first emotional center, or root chakra. Research has shown that there is a biology of belonging, an actual biological nutrient passing between people who live together, a nutrient that has physical and metabolic consequences. All our body rhythms have to do, having to do with sleeping, eating, dreaming, hormones, immunity, cortisol levels, heart rate, and in, endocrine, sorry about my pronunciation, systems are governed by these metabolic regulators. And when people are together in a communal situation, their biological body rhythms become synchronized and regular. Being together in close and constant fashion the way we are in a family, eating, sleeping, conversing, playing, working, praying, causes us to synchronize our biological watches. In one study, for example, the individual members of a B-52 bomber cruise were all found to have similar levels of stress hormones while they were working together. When you lose this nutrient of belonging, feelings of isolation and lack of meaningful relationships give rise to a sense of hopelessness, helplessness, and despair. And these emotions can cause problems with your physical health. Quite literally, your immune system becomes inflamed when you are depressed. Prolonged despair, loss, and bereavement that turn to chronic depression make your immune system pump out inflammatory substances like cortisol, IL-1, IL-6, and TNF-alpha. These can make your joints ache with pain, make you feel tired, like you have the flu, and increase your risk for a host of bone, joint, blood, and immune system disorders, including osteoporosis. Another instance of health being affected by losing the feeling of belonging was shown in people who were separated from their parents too early or grew, grew up with mothers who were depressed or unavailable. These folks had a tendency toward depression and immune system dysfunction. Because of this early and painful separation, they were unable to negotiate their sense of loneliness in the world. They often unwittingly found themselves in situations that recreated, emotionally, nutritionally, and biologically, their initial feeling of abandonment. They lived sparse, frugal, and solitary lives that led to a sense of deprivation. The hopelessness they experienced throughout life ultimately rendered them more vulnerable to cancer. A lack of security can also come after a huge shock. The loss of a beloved family member, an abrupt and painful move, or anything else that leaves you feeling disoriented. Like a plant that's been pulled up by its roots, or like being traumatically pulled from your home and sent to a foreign land. And science shows us that during these moments, we can also lose our biological roots, our hair. When there's chaos between family members, there's an increased risk of hair loss, alopecia, uh, I think, not to mention psoriasis and other skin problems. So as you can see, having solid external relationships is essential to our health. Science backs this up by showing that social integration, wide social networks and social support creates stronger immune systems. In fact, studies show that more and better relationships mean more and better white blood cells, which help us resist infections and protect us from a wide variety of health perils including arthritis, depression, and the worsening of symptoms of conditions like tuberculosis. 
Social interaction also decreases the amount of medication people need and accelerates their recovery from illness. Other studies show that those who had three or fewer relationships caught more colds and were more susceptible to viruses than those with more relationships. Those who had six or more relationships got the least, and when they did develop colds, they had the mildest symptoms. This isn't what you would expect, is it? You'd think that having more friends would expose you to more germs and therefore cause more colds. But germ theory obviously doesn't have the full answer to why we get colds and infections. The reason people with fewer friends are more susceptible may be because they experience stress from being alone and unsupported most of the time. That stress causes the adrenal glad glands to release uh, no pinephrine, excuse me, and suppress the immune system. In fact, it's been shown that people who have few friends are at greater risk for health problems than smokers or the obese. They also have fewer levels of corticosteroids and immunosuppressants that make them more susceptible to chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, HIV, frequent colds and infections, and osteoporosis. Depressive thought patterns are also potent. Depression's capacity to increase one's risk of osteoporosis is equal to the risk of having low calcium intake or smoking. So next time you see yet another TV commercial or magazine advertisement for calcium supplements to prevent bone loss, your thoughts should also go to lifestyle changes and affirmations to support your health. If you are unlovable to other people, you are frightened socially or have grief that causes you to seclude yourself, you must aggressively try to change the thought patterns that keep you entrenched in self-imposed exile, or soon your bones, joints, blood, skin, and immune system will let you know that your solitude is unhealthy. But enough of all the scientific medical stuff. What do we do to act do what do we actually do to heal ourselves? Unfortunately, we're gonna find out about that tomorrow. <laughs> Um, I did read a bit longer than normally I would to get the complete thought out. Uh, so we will continue reading this chapter tomorrow uh, during the morning report. So if you'd like to keep hearing from this chapter, uh, join me again tomorrow. Thank you. You're such a good Oh, thanks. Also, hello, Herman. Welcome. Um, unfortunately, you've joined us at the end here, but uh, you can watch the replay if you like. And I encourage you to, if you have the time. It is fantastic content we've got going on today. The reading today actually reminded me of some things that I need to apply to my methodology over the next couple of weeks. Indeed. It's all good stuff. I'm very excited to get to all of it, but we have to be patient. I can only read so much during one report. True. We don't want to keep everybody here all day. Although we could. Well... I gotta work though. This apartment don't pay for itself. This apartment don't pay for yourself, which is why we need sponsors. Which is why you should join Patreon. Yep. yep. Um, it is because that. of support from viewers like you that this report happens at all. Um, so with increased support, uh, the report will continue to grow and have more interesting things such as a physical fitness segment and a cooking segment, just like a real <laughs> morning like a, news show. Just a real morning news show. <laughs> that goes on for like six hours, I think, is like the duration of uh, some morning shows. I am not doing a six hour <laughs> morning show. I'm thinking like two or three. You know, we all got lives. <laughs> but it will also allow us to expand our channel and offer you all a great deal more yes. every single day. Uh, you can read about this on Patreon. It's part of our goals, but the more support we have, the better looking the <laughs> report will get. <laughs> <laughs> Not that it looks bad now, but sound is one of our biggest complaints and the lighting isn't great. I was going to say, I would like to point out that I have done some phenomenal work with this report considering how little we have to work with. I'm pretty happy with this program, but it would be more like we want to add add to it. Um, some Better cameras. That's what I want yeah. to add to it. And fun. also more cameras to yes. accommodate our future segments of physical fitness. Because obviously um, our fitness master can't really show you anything here on this camera. And he, it's he not big also, enough. He is also a very buff dragon. So, you know, it's, 
There's not enough space for him behind my desk. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't really cook behind my desk. So we need we need our equipment upgraded, better lighting, better sound. She needs more kitchen cameras. equipment because we moved without any. I need Anyways, to, I need yes. to actually buy pots and pans. This is this is what's holding up the kitchen witch these days. A serious lack of so. functional space. One more friendly reminder to visit Patreon. It's going to go back to a regular desk. Would we like to see some cats? I hear some cats crying. Do we need hashtag more cats? Mm -hmm. So, uh, yes. Uh, I bring it up because uh, uh, the more people that join Patreon, the more that we can offer in return. And each individual member also receives their own perks and rewards um, in return for their support. So I hope you'll consider joining. Oh, and here comes cats. And of course... Oh, oh no. Oh, no, it's the well, <laughs> let's see. Let's go back to the desk then. Oh, hold on. Let me see. I just have to... You know she's not going to stay with me forever, right? All yeah, right. This is Wiggly. Come here. Come here, Cat, little this one. This is too wiggly. Our camera's not working. Yes. We want to get new cameras. Mm -hmm. Hashtag more cats. Hi, sweet. Safety cameras are on, I don't like it. It's okay, honey. It's okay. It's okay. These are our children. For anyone who hasn't seen them before, that's one child. Yeah, sometimes the cameras decide to just not work. <laughs> um, but we make do. Yes, yeah, she's a very heavy, muscular cat. Come here, baby. Yes, there we go. And there is a rush doll. Say hello. Oh, you look so beautiful in the light today. Hashtag more cats. Ooh. It's okay, honey. <laughs> You're so beautiful. Yes. Everyone wants to see all your blackness. You are the dark darkness, baby doll. We'd go to cat camera, but... Uh, the equipment's just decided to work. Uh, all right. All right. So, I would like to thank everyone for watching the morning report today. I love uh, all the participation, all the feedback, and uh, I'm grateful for this community. So, uh, hello, darling. We love all of you. We appreciate your support. It's wonderful to hear from you every single day. Remember, today is the day to go get it. Do it. Do it, babe. Make it rain. Seize your power and make those changes. Attack that life. You can do it. I'm going to finish this off with a lot of positive thinking. And black fur. And black fur in your face. Well, uh, I guess you'll just have to stare at her flank. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> thanks for watching. And have a wonderful, beautiful, very beautiful day. day. And uh, we hope to see you during our events later today. Be blessed.